101 million years ago, on the east coast of Australia, the large herds of Mataburasaurus are moving south for the summer. They usually move across open areas, but inevitably have to go through some dense forested regions. And many local dinosaurs know summer has arrived when these giants crash through the undergrowth. The first of these is a lone male. Mataburasaurus usually live in herds that can reach over a hundred, but occasionally, large males will strike out alone. At three tons, there are very few predators that can harm him, and so he feels safe moving ahead of the herd, and feeding by himself. As he walks through the forest, he sees some low-hanging leaves to browse, but as he walks over to them, he is suddenly set upon. Running out of the undergrowth surrounding the Mataburasaurus, is a flock of Lianolosaura. The small herbivores under two meters long swarm around the huge hadrosaur, chirping and jumping back and forth in a threat display, trying to chase the larger dinosaur off. The male Mataburasaurus has unknowingly walked too close to their nesting site, and is in fact only a few meters away from their eggs, covered by mounds of leaves. The flock continues to harass the giant, some even ram their shoulders into his legs, but the Lianosaura only weigh about 8 kilograms, and the three-ton intruder barely even notices the smaller herbivores. In fact, he completely ignores them, reaching up and browsing on the low-hanging leaves as the Lianosaura continue to harmlessly bounce off of him. Even when one of the sentries climbs up the tree and gets to the Matabarasaurus's eye level, the Hadrosaur only gives the loud, angry mother a quick glance before returning to feeding. The whole flock has joined in the fray, determined to fend off the huge creature, despite the fact that he is content to ignore them. In the bushes behind them, however, is a real threat. An Australovenator is biding his time, watching the scene play out. At seven meters long, he is the top predator in these parts, but even he wouldn't attack an adult Mataparasaurus. A lone female, maybe, but not a bull in his prime. The predator is actually after the Lianolosaura, crowded around the large herbivore. On one hand, they are now distracted. On the other, he would still have to get close to the powerful Mataburasaurus they were annoying. He had waited long enough. He had to take a chance. His fast approach through the foliage was not silent, and the sentry in the tree quickly picked up the noise and saw the predator moving towards the group. She let out a series of chirps to warn her flock, which instantly began to scatter away from the threat. One Lianolosaura ran the wrong way at first, before seeing the Australovenida over the shrubs, and turned around. But that split second was enough for the hunter to close in. Outstretching his hooked claws, the predator prepared to grasp his prey when he was struck from the side by something heavy. He slid across the ground till he collided with a tree. Looking in the direction he had been hit, the carnivore saw the Mataburasaurus had struck him with his tail, and now turned to face the prone Australovenator. Getting to his feet, he tried to move past the giant, but was blocked as the huge herbivore moved into his path. The carnivore roared in anger, flexing his claws. In response, the Mataburasaurus took a deep breath, lowered his head, and let out a bellowing alarm. The tissue on his nose expanded, making a booming trumpet-like honk. The sheer volume of it and the close proximity between the two dinosaurs sent a shockwave through the predator's whole body. Although usually used for communication, the Mataburasaurus's loud call could be a weapon all on its own. The Australovan had a turn tail with ringing in his ears, shaking his head in confusion. The Mataburasaurus quickly calmed down. The Lianolosaura had also vanished so he decided to move on and link up with his herd, moving steadily through the forest, taking extra care not to tread on the nests around his feet. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of Australia's most well-known dinosaurs, Mataburasaurus. Mataburasaurus was first discovered in 1963 by a grazer near the Thompson River in Queensland, Australia and was named in 1981 after the town of Mataburra. Other remains have been found in Queensland and New South Wales, and is one of the most complete dinosaur specimens from Australia. 
It grew up to 8 metres long, stood 3 metres high, and weighed up to 3 tonnes. It was a hadrosaur, and was originally named as an iguanodontid. However, because of some of its more basal traits, it is now thought to be more closely related to Tenotosaurus. One of these traits were its teeth. Most hadrosaurs have batteries of teeth that get replaced regularly in order to grind vegetation down. Matabarosaurus had shearing teeth that came up in generations, with only one generation present at a time. These shearing teeth and its powerful bite force are similar to ceratopsians and likely used to tackle tough plants like cycads. Most hadrosaurs are quadrupedal, but can run on their hind legs. Matabarosaurus, while also quadrupedal, likely walked and ran on its hind legs, using its forelimbs when standing still or for manipulating plant matter. The snout likely had a large fleshy nose that could have been similar to a resonating chamber, used to increase the volume of its vocalizations. So instead of having a large crest like Parasaurolophus or Corypheosaurus, it had a large nose. Interestingly, some of the fossils of Matabarosaurus are found in marine deposits, but this does not mean it was a marine animal. It is far more likely that these individuals died and their bodies were washed out to sea before floating to the bottom of the ocean and becoming buried. This is more common than one might think, and is actually responsible for some of the most well-preserved fossils. Matabarosaurus is something of a symbol for paleontology in Australia, as it's not only well known amongst the general public, but as one of the most complete Australian dinosaurs. You can find multiple mounts or models around the country, including this one from the Queensland Museum, taken by myself last time I was there. Given that fossils have been found across two states, Matabarosaurus must have been quite successful, which isn't surprising given that hadrosaurs were some of the most successful dinosaur families in the globe. And they likely made prehistoric Australia a lot noisier, with their trumpety noses. I personally believe that it was a beautiful sound, most of the time. But what do you think of Matabarosaurus? Do you think they made beautiful choruses? Or were more like an out-of-tune school band. What lesser-known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, thank you for watching.